you are reading that title correctly. We are doing a thousand miles in this truck right here. Now, I'm right now I'm in Springfield, Missouri. It's like seven o'clock in the evening. And so where you're joining me halfway on this journey. And so far the truck has been absolutely amazing. Now, keep in mind, first of all, this is the truck that has almost 500,000 miles. And this is the truck where the axle was on fire and then I put a new axle on. And so now it's now repaired. But if you're wondering, Alex, what are you even doing with this truck? Why are you even doing a thousand miles? How did you even get here? I'm gonna be answering all of those questions here in a couple of minutes. I just need to start the pump, fuel up because I don't wanna be wasting a whole bunch of time doing this intro. So anyway, let's fill up, let's eat, and then let's, uh, let's hit the road. Let me talk to you what's going on with this truck. So I'm laying underneath my truck at the back axle. And so you can see the diff cover they transferred over from my old axle. Uh, and you can see it's a little, just a little shinier or, or better shape than my axle was right here. Like it's, or maybe that's just oil, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyways, the point remains the same, that this axle, the, the leaf spring, the, the shocks, everything. Like I bought a complete used axle, so all of this was replaced. I know my e-brake is much tighter now, right? So I'm really happy that my e-brake is good because my e-brake used to go right to the floor. So I'm really happy about that for sure. And, uh, but in general, yeah, I mean, I've just drove from Wisconsin. So anyways, what's the situation with this truck, right? Obviously I'm driving it down for a reason. Now, if you recall, maybe in my older video, you watched that uh, the plan for this truck was to convert it to electric. But as you may know, the, if you go watch the guy, uh, Benjamin Nelson, if you go watch him, you'll see progress is steady, but it's not as quickly as I would have hoped on the tractor conversion. So now that I just bought a house and I kind of wouldn't mind actually having a truck at the house, that's what I'm gonna do. And instead of paying the storage fees as well, it's like, it's a win, 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 right? So that's the plan right now. I am driving this truck home, my truck, I'm driving it home and I'm gonna park it at the house, right? That's the plan. Um, and you know, this way while, it, this way when I do come home, somebody's shower is now ready. There you go, now you know. <laughs> but anyways, so now this way if I come home and I actually need a truck, I don't have to use the Enterprise Rental, I could just use my truck instead. So now what about this whole restart situation, right? You're wondering, Alec, are you really doing a restart? Well, I am. So I delivered in upstate New York yesterday and, oh, my thing just clicked. Hold on, hold on one sec, let's, let's fill it up and then I'll continue the story. All right, so the tank is full. I got some food over here and uh, I just wanted to finish what I was saying, right? So yesterday I delivered my load in Albany, New York and from Albany, I deadheaded down to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I dropped off my truck at the, I'm running my radar detector, so I'm sure it's gonna interrupt me all the time because I'm technically not a commercial vehicle right now. Uh, so anyways, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I dropped off the, sh uh, the truck at the shop just for a quick oil change. And yesterday I was looking on my computer, I booked a flight, right? And the flight I booked, it was the last ticket, the last one, and it was the, like, the most basic economy, not the regular economy, like even worse than the regular economy. And it was the last one. And it wasn't the last one for the whole flight. It was just the last one on the connecting flight. And so my flight went this morning, right? So this, uh, so I booked it last night and then went to bed. So this morning I get on my flight, it's packed. And I went from Harrisburg to Charlotte. Uh, and that, that was the flight that was full. And that was the one that I had the super basic economy on. And so um, I, I flew there and to Charlotte, had like an hour and a half layover. And then from, uh, from there, from Charlotte, I flew to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is where I picked up my truck after taking an Uber, right? And that's, that's where we did the last closing videos. I left it in storage, right? That, that was, that's where, it's, you know, so basically this is an update of what's going on with this truck. Um, so, and then, so now I've been driving this, you know, so I landed around 10 o'clock in Wisconsin, I think 10 or 11 o'clock roughly. And I've been driving all the way down to, um, to where was it? <laughs> what was it? Missouri somewhere, Springfield, Missouri. Goodness gracious, just left my, uh, left my brain, I guess. So the town. So anyways, long story short, is we're heading all the way down to Texas, right? Cause that's where I bought my house. And we're gonna be parking the truck and I'm gonna just let it sit at my house instead of paying for it in storage, right? Especially since 
um, progress isn't as quick as I'd like on the uh, on the tractor that Ben is doing. Now, guys, I want you to understand. You know, I, I heard your feedback when I said I'm converting the truck to electric, and some of it was positive and some of it was negative. But I want you to understand that, like, you know, I really think an electric conversion is going to be awesome. I really do think that, and I really do want to do it. Right now, the only question that can come up is, should I do it with this truck? Or maybe should I do it with like a cheaper truck? You know what I mean, an entry level truck. Because this truck is still kind of fine, especially now with the new axle and whatnot. So I, it makes sense in, in, for me. And so that's why I really, I really still will do want to do it. And when that time comes, uh, hopefully, like you know, I can do it quickly. Because that's that's what I, I want to do. I just want to convert it really quickly so I can just test it out and get a video out to you guys. You know. Now with my big old tank, the whatever 55 did Titan. Uh, 55 gallon Titan fuel tank that I have in this truck believe it or not I only have to stop once right so it's all over a thousand miles from Wisconsin to Texas and I stopped once in Missouri which I think is pretty close to halfway um, and so th that's why I mean you know it's it's that's nice that's nice so one stop and now here's the thing right so let's talk about the restart so I did my load so technically I am off duty right right that commercial vehicle is off duty it's over there and so it's like, okay, well, when are you gonna go back and get it, right? And as much as I want to sit at home in my new house and enjoy it, I can. My flight from Texas, okay, takes off at noon. It's like 12:30 or something like that, right around that. I'm not sure exactly, but I think 12:30 or 12:15, something like that, right? So call it noon, right? Get by the time I check in, gotta show up an hour early. So my ETA roughly is like 3:30 in the morning to Texas, right? So I'm gonna be there, but maybe I stop once more to pick up an energy drink or something, stretch my legs, right? So we'll call it four in the morning, I'm gonna show up in Texas. So, and my flight is at noon, right? And so then I fly and I land in Pennsylvania like at 7 p.m., 10 p.m.? I'd have to check my flight, you know what I mean? So, uh, but like, yeah, it's not a, uh, it's gonna be a hard restart. It's gonna be a difficult restart. You know how many people say they worked harder on their restart than they did uh, there during the week. You know what I mean? So it's like that's kind of ridiculous. But anyways, enough of this talking. Let's get some miles done. Let's uh, let's keep going and uh, let's see how far we can get. Wow, we'll talk about a fail, but also a success, you know? So obviously, suns you can see, it's just coming up. So that means it's like, I think it's like seven in the morning right now. <laughs> so it's essentially 12 hours later, right? So um, and so basically what happened is right after I recorded, you know, that clip and whatnot, I was like, dude, I'm tired, you know what I mean? So I pulled over, took a nap. Uh, and so now I'm gonna have my wife drive me to the airport so I can actually finish up my restart and go get my truck. <laughs> but anyways, guys, so I am finally home. Um, I think I'm gonna upload this after I see you guys see the house video. So um, if anything, you've already seen this house. And uh, so yeah, it's a, it's kind of cool right now. So it's, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna get inside, I'm gonna take a shower and then jump back on the plane. Um, you know, the drive actually went fine. I did get pulled over. I got I got a ticket, uh, 72 in a 55, I think he said, but it, that was right when it went from 65 to 55. And so I think he was just camping out over there. The, tro the uh, it wasn't a trooper, it was a like right local police. So he, he was a nice guy, but, but there's a, another ticket, darn it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's why I'm glad to be not moving this truck around anymore. I still got my wheels in the back that I got to unload in the garage. Um, but anyways, you hear all those crickets. Uh, that's like my that, uh, crickets. The perfect timing for when I say all these bad jokes. <laughs> A really quick walk around of the truck. So for the most part, it did totally fine. Um, the only thing is this came off the roof and it was like banging and I didn't know what it was, but it was banging on the window on the door. Um, so really that, but mechanically speaking, um, everything is fine. The axle did good, so no issues there. Um, I did get a couple more lights on the dash. So I have my check engine light, um, so that's still fine. And then I got the airbag light come on and then I actually got a throttle control light come on. Um, and I'm, I'm fairly certain this truck needs
means a new PCM. I'm fairly certain about that. So um, that's why, I mean, overall it did okay. There were no like major, major issues. I didn't break down. So that's surprising, you know what I mean? It's, this is an older truck and it's doing, you know, I just did a thousand miles and you know, I wasn't taking it easy. You know, I was going, I was moving rather quick, but um, I, I, I just did a thousand miles. Today. Huh, I don't know, it looks like it's, it's either a bad paint job or I hit something. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like I hit something because how do you scratch this but not this? So, um, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it must be a bad paint job. So, anyways, uh, the point remains the same that uh, this truck did just did a thousand miles really, really good. No problems. Look at that bad paint job. Speaking of which, you guys, you guys are asking, Alex, why is your paint job so garbage? Here's the thing, okay? As much as I would want a good paint job, uh, I that that was the goal. I also understand this truck is not in like tip top shape or in mint condition, right? And so the reason I have a bad paint job is because I was trying to be cheap, right? I wasn't trying to be super cheap, but I was find, trying to find someone that can give me a good discount, right? And unfortunately what happened is the guy explained it that when he did this door it there was a reaction to the bondo or to the something right so it reacted and so he had to respray the door separately right and so that created an issue or why that created why it's now the door is a separate color you can see it in the other videos and whatnot it's it's a totally even right now where the sun's not even coming up that much even right now it's a totally different color um and so that's why like right here you can kind of see this is like different than this right so um the point remains the same that you know i, I told him like hey I, I want to i don't want to spend a ton right uh, a, a good decent paint job totally completely we're talking seven eight thousand dollars i didn't want to be up there and so uh i told him I'm, I'm like hey i want a decent deal and i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna try to whatever i don't care it's water under the bridge so he fixed up most of the truck but this part he you know he messed up and 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 my only question to him would be like, dude, for $400 more, you could have resprayed the door. And if you would have told me it's $400 more expensive, I would have paid, you know, but for some, like not completing the job well aggravates me. And I can clearly see that, you know, he, he, but again, this all comes back to me, Alex, lesson learned, you get what you pay for. And that's, oh my, <laughs> something's in my eye, goodness gracious. And I think that's what, that's what most people need to understand. Most people, when they're hiring a transporter, when they're hiring a broker just on price, I think that needs to be the sales pitch. You get what you pay for. So if you want a cut rate loser carrier, go right ahead. If you want someone that's not gonna communicate, that's gonna show up late, that's gonna be a terrible experience, go ahead. This paint job has more than anything told me, Alex, you get what you pay for. This paint job has showed me. So I should have just spent the extra $1,500. It would have been $5,000 instead of three grand or whatever, 3,300 or whatever it was. And, and I should have just paid it. For me, uh, looking back at it now, $1,500 wouldn't have broken the bank. Absolutely not. This is gonna stay with me for how long? I'm gonna keep this truck for at least another couple years and I'm gonna be constantly reminded what kind of crappy job I did by hiring some incompetent individual. So, yeah, I'm frustrated, I don't like it, but I can't change it, so I release it. <laughs> so anyways, guys, so keep that in mind. Um, you get what you pay for, use that to, you know, maybe improve your business or how you pitch it when you're going, when you're dealing with a broker, or maybe when you're dealing with a customer, right? Because that's, that's an issue. You're calling up a customer, and the customer goes like, oh, well, the broker's tell me 2,000, and you're quoting me 2,800. And you can tell the broker, understand, you get what you pay for. Broker's then gonna post it on the board for 1500, you need some cut rate carrier. So use those kind of things, you know, use this information to like improve your business. That'll do it for this video, you guys. I'm gonna go inside. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.